Um, we were talking just when we broke for lunch there a bit, and I thought that it would be kind of maybe you guys would be able to take some stuff, um, some information from there that may be helpful to you. Uh, so how, how did we even get into what we were uh, about? Like very. Oh, we started rewards. here. So you were asking me about food yeah. and balls. Um, so I'm a big fan in obedience uh, uh, for using food. Uh, I think there, there are some huge benefits. One of the most, you know, tangible benefits is like it's the only drive that we can kind of manufacture, right, and, and manipulate in a dog, right? A dog that they don't need to play ball, they don't need to play tug, but they all need to eat, right? They need food to survive. Um, and, and typically, when people well, traditionally wouldn't use food for training, right, because the thought was maybe the dog would be dependent upon the food or the food is kind of like bribing your dog to, to train with you. Um, then they moved to, okay, we're going to use food, but to motivate the dog to use food, we're going to essentially starve the dog and if not let the dog have access to food for a couple of days and then try and feed them. Um, so obviously to me those are on like two ends of the spectrum right like no food at all or well kind of no food for a few days and, and then you get to eat um, what we, we where we ended up getting to is one of the are you guys familiar with existential feeding yes yeah so for those that aren't familiar with it um, existential feeding means that every calorie that that dog gets comes via you and your dog doing something for those calories, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it, it's it's based kind of like hand feeding. I don't like to call it hand feeding because not all of the time does the food have to come from my hand. Mm -hmm. um, and hand feeding doesn't necessarily imply that that's the only feeding that they get, right? But existential feeding means every calorie from the moment they wake up to the moment they get to sleep is from doing something for you. And to me, the quickest way to a dog's heart is through their stomach, right? We, we can manipulate that. Um, and we get, when, when we're doing the bite work stuff right now, we talk, we're, like, we've talked quite a bit about like creating proactive dogs and reactive decoys. Uh, and that same theory kind of applies when we're doing obedience too, right? We want the dogs to be the one to engage you. You not trying to, how, how many times have we gotten out and said, okay, I need to get my dog's attention, right? And we start showing them the food that we have or the toy that we have and saying, hey, look how fun this thing is. Like, look, look, look how it works, right? And we're gonna play and have a great time. Uh, but just like in, in decoy work and in bite work, for me, that's fruit from the poison tree, right? We're telling the dog like, hey, I'm gonna try my best to entertain you and you're gonna decide when those times are that you're gonna, that's gonna be enough entertainment. Mm -hmm. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. So in obedience, we want our dogs to have the same attitude that they have in bite work. Right? To come out and say, hey, what are we doing? I know that I do stuff and great things happen, but it's coming from you, so please give me some direction. Right? And we want to have that attitude. I talked a little bit about it yesterday of being like, huh. like we're, we're too good for them. Right? Opposition, reflex in theory, not necessarily physical, but sometimes physical as well, right? keeping them away from us. And they're begging us and them trying to get our attention to, to engage with us. And, and we decide to every now and then to give them the opportunity to do that. Were you guys following me so far? Mm -hmm. So when we have them first understanding, they have to understand what this existential feeding thing is. Otherwise, it's not that we're not going to get that the level of engagement that we're looking for. But when they understand that, hey, my food bowls don't exist to me anymore, food comes from you, then it, it's much our, our negative punishment and obedience mm -hmm. means a lot more. Right? We can get them out. Like how many of our dogs get super excited when it's dinner time, right? They see the routine of you get in their food bowl or, or whatever's happening, that level of excitement and engagement, it's like, wow, why can't you be like this when I need you to be like this, right? But we can, if in your dog's mind, every moment with you is potentially dinner time, right? If they do the right thing, it's potentially dinner time. Um, and when they make the wrong choice or we take them out and they don't want to engage with us and then we put them away. Imagine if you're going to feed your dog dinner and you get your bowl and you do your full routine that they're used to and they're getting all excited and they're doing and then you say, mm, I'm going to crate. Mm. And you put that dinner away. How kind of 
ticked off your dog is going to be, right? Like pretty driven. So that that's the the what we want them to feel and experience when we negatively punish them in obedience or, or whatever we're kind of doing with them. They, they need that drive.